Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss a new topic that is Gershenkron effect. Let's see what this effect is. So this effect is actually uh, developed by Alexander uh, Gershenkron, uh, and he claims that um, changing the base year for an index would determine the growth rate of the index. So this is what is known by this effect. So if you come to this effect, you can see that uh, this is applicable uh, to aggregation method using some reference price structure. For example, we know that if you go for index number calculation, we will be having a base year and we will be comparing uh, the uh, the uh, the present scenario with the base year's case, or we will be obtaining the index number of current situation ba based on the base year's situation. So here each country's quantities are valued by a uniform set of prices to obtain the volume, and that is what uh, here uh, it is meant by this method. Okay. So or else you can say that there will be some reference volume structure. Uh, for example, in, with respect to purchasing power parity, uh, which could be obtained by valuation of uniform set of quantities by each country's price. So this too can be uh, the case. So uh, you have to understand that if production is measured in real terms, this would have its effect uh, on some some variables. Or, but this effect does not exist overall, and that is what uh, we could understand. Uh, and this effect would measure the difference between the past year's index and last year's index. So these two. Types of methods, uh, the last year's method and past year's method can be used to find out the index number. So when it con comes to uh, Gershenkron effect, this would be measuring the difference between these two, these two types of indices. Now, what does it mean by this? So it actually tells us that the early weighted average would be growing faster than the late weighted average. And also we could understand that there is some negative correlation exists and this could be mainly due to the relatively rapid technical progress. And this can also be because of the falling relative price benefit from cost reducing substitution. And uh, or as we can see uh, that it can be uh, vice versa also. That means that so slow technical progress would be there increasing relative price suffer from cost uh, reducing substitution, this can also be the case. So this uh, Gershenkron effect uh, would be uh, coming to uh, coming into being when activities whose relative prices are falling tend to increase their volume shares uh, of total production and vice versa. Which is exactly what happened during the industrial revolution when manufacturing expanded uh, is product produce volume. We could understand that industrial revolution was there in order to expand industrial production. So when economic from the perspective of economics, we could see that uh, this uh, Gershenkron Kron effect is uh, a con it's a con it, this is considered to be a bad measurement uh, instead of going for aggregation or index number case. We could see that it would be more appropriate to measure economic growth by real terms because this would be uh, helping us to go for comparison between different different countries. This would be eliminating problems connected with inflation uh, such as the Gershenkron effect. But we could see that uh, there exists some kind of bias. So, Gershenkron effect have really uh, made some early changes in specific example examined by Alexander Gershenkron. Uh, he had his own opinion. This is not one opinion when uh, this effect should be used or even whether it is not working or even if it is working. Anyway, we cannot use a method when it is not working. So when it is working, we can use it. So as per certain people like Larson and Nelson, this effect should be considered. And this can be considered only in certain period and these periods can be periods of trans, uh, transitioning from handicrafting to mechanized industries. So this can be uh, one of the periods 
where we could apply this effect and there was another person known as uh, jonas jumberg he has argued that uh, so if you go for a generalizations uh, or it could be something like a generalization since since a structural change is something which could be characterized by this proportional change in prices of goods as well as certain uh, capacities that we use for production so this effect is actually uh, considered as important in either industrial development or total commodity production it can we can also see certain arguments related to that time period uh, where when alexander hastington has made his effect more pronounced so this was due to special condition that was there in the united states of america so just take the case of second world war period that is the 1939 period so the effect of growth would be actually reversed due to some depression there was no growth Uh, growth was actually moving in the uh, reverse direction there was some artificial maintaining of prices of highly fabricated goods due to output restrictions and also we could see that output of certain simple goods that was uh, relatively high and the prices fell down to an extent so and that's all about this effect i request you to like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos You can also be a part of my Telegram channel and Telegram group to discuss your doubts. Thank you for watching.